Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Tragedy in Wixom as a 14 year old boy riding his bike is killed by a hit and run driver who then ditched his vehicle. What a bloody shame, really. How do you, how do you say anything more? Yeah, I do have a message for the driver. Turn yourself in. Also breaking tonight, a monumental meeting between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The world watching as the two meet and shake hands for the first time. Thanks for being with us for the news at 11. This is the image the world will wake up to in the morning. After decades of hostility between the two countries, President Trump and Kim Jong-un come face to face to strike a deal over North Korea's nuclear weapons. Their first ever meeting lasted less than an hour before they continued in a group session. NBC's Susan McGinnis reports on what many hope will be a productive discussion. An historic handshake kicks off the first ever meeting of the sitting leaders of the U.S. and North Korea. I feel really great. We're going to have a great discussion and I think tremendous success. President Trump and Kim Jong-un met on Sentosa Island in Singapore to lay the foundation for what could be a groundbreaking nuclear agreement. And the meeting lasted less than an hour. The two men then met up with top officials, President Trump sounding optimistic but not offering specifics. The president went in hoping to seal a deal to rid North Korea of all nuclear weapons with offers of economic aid and assurances Kim's regime will survive. Kim Jong-un could demand more, sanctions relief, and the removal of some or all U.S. troops from South Korea. But in a deal that demands trust, there's no shortage of skeptics. We've heard uh, all the promises before, not just from Kim Jong-un, but from his father. I don't know that Kim's going to trust Trump, because Trump changes his mind all the time. While talks have only begun, Kim Jong-un may have already achieved his biggest win, standing shoulder to shoulder with a U.S. president who might even invite him to America. Top White House officials are continuing talks with their North Korean counterparts. President Trump is scheduled to leave Singapore early Tuesday morning. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. And be sure to wake up with Local 4 News today for a complete recap of the overnight meeting between Kim Jong-un and President Trump. That begins at 4.30 a.m. Also breaking tonight, police have found the minivan involved in a hit and run that killed a 14-year-old boy in Wixom. The boy was on a bike when he was hit. That driver ditched the car and is still on the run tonight. Jermont Terry is live in Commerce Township where the minivan was found. Good evening, Jermont. Good evening, Jason. Right now, they are processing the minivan involved in this hit and run. Now, the crash happened about two miles down the road in Wixom, but the man behind the wheel kept going, and he ditched that van right here in Commerce Township. And tonight, police are searching for the killer as a family and community grieve. Just looking at the windshield of this minivan, there's no way the driver did not realize he hit someone. The impact of this minivan killed a 14-year-old boy. The investigation reveals the boy was riding his bicycle down Potter between Black Locust and Flamingo in Wixom when the minivan ran the boy over and never stopped. It's horrible. That's all I can say. Many neighbors rushed to the child's side, but his injuries were too severe. Emergency crews tried saving him. Uh, unfortunately, the, the boy died as a result of his injuries. As the teen's bike sat on the side of the road, all neighbors could do is think about the man behind the wheel of this minivan who took off after the crash and left the kid to die. Come on. You don't run away from something like that. Man up. Instead, police say the man drove with this broken windshield and all that front end damage to this mobile home park nearly two miles away. He parked and ditched the van. Yeah, I do have a message for the driver. Turn yourself in. Back in the neighborhood, people looked on in disbelief and investigators tried to determine if the driver ever slowed down. This deadly bicycle hit and run truly touches the Wixom Public Safety Director, who just gave a warning to students at two graduations hours earlier. If you're out riding your bikes in the street, Please be careful. Wear your helmets. So to have this happen just hours after, after those remarks, it, it, it just tears me up. And most definitely that 14-year-old's family is tore up by his death tonight. Again, over my shoulder, investigators with the Oakland County Sheriff's Department, they are processing, taking images, trying to gather all the evidence that they can from inside this minivan. And again, just looking at that windshield, there's no doubt that driver realized 
that he hit someone. That man is still on the run tonight. Police have not identified him just yet. For now, reporting live in Commerce Township, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Yeah, exactly. And you bet somebody knows something, something out there, Jermont. And if they do, call Wixom Police tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jermont. And if Solani Man is behind bars tonight facing multiple charges of child pornography, convicted sex offender Patrick Cheryl Mix is charged with eight counts of child porn and other similar crimes. He was recently paroled in March after serving 11 years for molesting children. Mix was caught in possession of a phone and using the Internet, both in violation of his parole. He's due back in court June 21st. An owner is attacked by his pit bull as an animal control officer looked on. Happened this afternoon in Dearborn. The officer was called out after neighbors complained about the dog. While she peeked over the fence, the pit bull went after her. The dog then turned on its owner when he tried to restrain it. He was bitten several times in the arms and is expected to be okay. The pit bull was put down shortly after that attack. After months of speculation, Ford's Blue Oval is coming to Michigan Central Station. Former owner Matthew Maroon made the announcement today. It comes after Detroit City Council ordered the station to be demolished in 2009. Maroon said the depot will become a symbol of the city's progress, and it's only fitting a Detroit company is moving in. Many folks agree, hoping this transformation will continue Detroit's success. It's going to make it more beautiful than it already is and this is what we needed for the city of Detroit to come back together as it was when we were kids. Ford has yet to say what its plans are for the station. The company is set to make an announcement on that part of it next week. Dozens of frustrated workers say they haven't been paid in weeks. They work for a seasonal company in Detroit collecting signatures for political campaigns. They weren't getting any answers, so they called Local 4 and Priya Mann got some answers. This is crazy, and it's like, if you look over here, it's a whole lot of people just waiting for their check. Chavez Powell stood in line for hours, waiting to get her paycheck. They didn't pay me all of my money. They only gave me, like, 200 of my money, not even that. The mom of three says she hasn't been paid for a month. So I had to pay my rent, and I've been looking for Phil, and he just been MIA. They work for a seasonal company in Detroit called Elite Campaigns. Workers collect signatures for various political campaigns, earning two to four bucks per name. This petition is in regards to Flint water infrastructure. On Monday, the door was closed, only opening briefly to let a few people in at a time to get their checks. We got paid this much because, um, no, without me. Because before y'all came, people was getting small checks and they had to go like getting there. Hey, Phil, it's Channel 4. Can you talk to us real quick? No problem. People are getting paid today. Hours later, he spoke off camera, saying discrepancies were due to mistakes or fraud. In some cases, workers yeah. filled out the dates themselves and could not be paid. You should be paid what you're owed or worked for. Ultimately, the impact is, is you don't get your bills paid, you get evicted. And that was Priya Mann reporting. Managers say they still have checks waiting to be picked up. New tonight, an officer in the right place, right time, when she sees a small child running along a busy road. Wow. A car dangling from a parking garage, the one simple mistake that created this dangerous situation. Hey, Ben. Jason, we've got temperatures that are going to be pretty seasonable in the morning, but we've got a wet commute that's going to be coming in the second half of the day. We will look at that straight ahead. But first, a group bridging the gap by transforming vacant land. We brainstormed what to do about the land. What better than to do than to farm it? The positive impact they're having on the community and how you can help next. 